This short film has been designed to provide you with a guide that can take you through the recruitment process from advertising and induction to why it is important to have suitable policies for your volunteers. Involving volunteers is an effective way for your organization to engage with the communities that you work with and provides vital resources that helps you to achieve your aims and objectives. This must be done in a way that is mutually beneficial to the organization and volunteer. There are an estimated 42,000 volunteers in Lewisham. People giving their time and skills to voluntary and community groups, faith groups, school governors, as well as statutory groups. This resource could be hugely beneficial to your group. Your organization must ensure that you have a volunteer policy, including equalities and diversity, health and safety, and that volunteers are covered by insurance. It is important that everyone within your organization understands why and how volunteers are involved. In order to achieve this, we recommend that you adopt a volunteer policy. The first thing that you need to do is to identify what roles you need volunteers for. People volunteer for a task, whether that is administration, befriending or bookkeeping. Be clear about the role. Do not detail a general volunteer. Explain the duties, the days that they will be required and the skills that you need the volunteer to have. Explain the purpose of the project and who will be line managing the volunteers. Are volunteer expenses available? It's important that volunteers have specific roles because it gives them a, a, a clear path of what they're going to be doing when they come to the club. We, we try to, you know, once we interview them and see what they may be, what their interests are or what they, they might be good at, we try to fit them into those roles which we think is, which they'll find pleasing and also will help the club. It's important to establish a role description for volunteers so that they know exactly what's expected of them. Some people will be able to give more than you might put in a role description, but the, the bare basics, for instance, if you've got someone who would like to come and help out just as a helper during um, the sessions with the kids, they maybe might feel they don't have many skills to offer, but they could be there to maybe uh, make drinks, wash up, um, make, help out with tidying things away, putting things out, you know, those sort of things, greeting people as they arrive. And it, it's important to explain that that's the kind of thing you'd like them to do, that it's nothing more complicated than that, and they don't need any extra special skills or clothing or anything to do those things. But then again, it might be someone who particularly wants to play a part in helping with the administration of the group, somebody who may want to take on the bookkeeping or the shopping or something, and it's very clear to give them their roles of what they would like to do. And if they'd like to expand on those roles, then we can talk again. I think it's important that people know what they're committing to. A volunteer is very different from a paid person, and that's quite hard for some people to understand. A paid person comes because somebody gives them some money to do it. A volunteer comes because, in fact, they need to feel comfortable in the environment uh, and that, that they are working in. So they need to have quite clear-cut roles. It may be that, we, in fact, what they think they're coming for initially is not what they actually want, and we have to tease that out. But it's all about making people comfortable, because that's the payback for a volunteer. Volunteer centres are a good method of advertising, as they reach a wide audience. But they're not the only means of promotion. Consider local newspapers, local radio, printed displays such as posters, printed leaflets and websites. There is no best way to advertise. You need to think about what is right for your organisation or group, how much it will cost and who your target audience is. I went specifically after primary schoolers because I knew that they had mums that would usually come and sit down, have a cup of tea or basically sit here for an hour and a half with nothing to do. So one of the main things I did was to approach the parents after a while, after they have uh, seen me work and kind of understood what I'm about. I uh, started to introduce myself and made myself known to them and said, you know, what are we trying to do? I told them we're trying to build a basketball club. Right now we just had community sessions, but we want to build a club and have teams. And I think, you know, you, your kids can get involved in that. And as soon as I said that, after, after a while, a lot of them came up to me and offered their services and said they would like to help out any way we can to make the club bigger and stronger. And that was really my approach to go after the young kids' uh, parents. Some of our volunteers might have come to us from the uh, volunteer centre at Lewisham or directly from um, a, a, an approach that they've made to the Scout Association. 
Um, we also advertise in our local parish magazine. We put adverts in the local uh, small magazine that goes around to local houses and, and what have you. Um, we also write newsletters out to our parents and carers and other members of our group in the hope that the information where we're requesting help, you know, volunteer help, will be passed on to their family and friends. A lot of the advertising is going out and talking to other people in the community. Gone to the colleges, gone out and talked to various uh, retirement groups, all sorts of different uh, organisations across the community who are involved in volunteers or potential volunteers. And we are talking to people all the time, various committees, things across the, the borough because we want to attract local people. This is important for it's a local hospital, a community hospital, and it's important that local people get involved. When someone responds to your advert, we recommend that you request that they complete an application form. This will ensure that you have all of their details in one place and can give you an opportunity to field out any applicants that do not fit the requirements. When you receive the completed application form, you should contact them as soon as possible. Call them or email to arrange to meet them. If you do not feel that they are suitable for the role, let them know. You can have a standard letter for this. Application forms are very important because they tell you a lot of information about a volunteer and you can ask questions there that they can fill in at leisure in the comfort of their own homes. They don't have to fill it in front of people because sometimes for some people it's difficult to write or it's difficult to, to complete a form so they need somebody else to help them. But that's very important for us to see some information that we can go back and chat through with the person when we're interviewing. We recommend that the interview process is very informal. You may choose to have a prescribed set of questions or have a relaxed conversation. You will need to find out why this person wants to volunteer with you and whether they will be suitable for the role. Remember, you're not obliged to take on everyone that comes to you. For both methods, you need to find a quiet, relaxed room with no distractions such as telephones or people popping in to use the printer. Give your full attention to your prospective new volunteer. Try not to sit opposite them as in a job interview, sideways on. Introduce yourself and the purpose of the project and the volunteer role. Give the prospective volunteer an opportunity to ask questions too. I think interviewing volunteers is something quite different from interviewing paid people. With paid people you can have a tick box system. With volunteers they're bringing their skills, they're bringing their time to you. You have a placement and you're trying to match the two together. And sometimes it works very nicely because you've done a good interview and you found out things about people. But sometimes you have to tease a little bit more out of people because they're not always sure what they want to do. So it's, I like to think that ours is an informal process because we can then gauge if people feel comfortable with us at the interview, they'll feel comfortable later when they're working with us. And we can get a lot more out of each other and it helps both parties. Develop a volunteer agreement that lays down your commitment to the volunteer and your expectations, such as what their role is and when they will be volunteering. For example, Wednesday afternoons. Be careful with the language. Do not create volunteer contracts. Volunteer agreements are very important because the volunteer knows exactly what they're committing themselves to. It also knows what their expectations are from the hospital. And it's, and it's an agreement between two parties, between the volunteer and between the friends and then they understand and it's written down for them and I think it's part of the process as well they would expect to have something more definite from us that secures them makes them feel more content inducting volunteers to the organization helps them to feel more engaged show them around the premises introduce them to team members explain what the organization and the role is about I think a good induction is information and people with information feel more comfortable, they feel more relaxed, they feel more able to express themselves and get involved. I think it's really important that people, that volunteers feel comfortable and know what the parameters are. We're fairly relaxed, we don't like to, to give rules and regulations etc but there are some rules and regulations that we need to make people aware of so we'll put them on health and safety training and various other trainings as appropriate if they need that. Make sure that volunteers receive the training necessary to enable them to carry out their role. 
Remember, training is not all about attending courses, but can be provided on a one-to-one -one basis. It may be as simple as showing them how to use the database. In terms of specifics, uh, we do run basketball courses. Some of them have become coaches, level one coaches. Some of them have taken up the refereeing uh, apprentice. That means they're able to officiate games and do the table officiating at the games. So wherever they want to help, we try to help them upskill themselves. Scout uh, adult training is very important um, and is in fact uh, nationally recognised by two bodies. Uh, one is the National Open College Network and also the National Qualification Framework um, where the adult, once completing the Scout training, um, can achieve a Level 2 NVQ um, which is the equivalent to a GCSE uh, Grade A star to C. Um, if they then want to go on to, once completing the training, go on to become a leader trainer themselves, which is always open to people to, to do, by carrying out additional courses, um, that then is accredited nationally um, for uh, GMVQ Level 3. Well, as I say to most volunteers, I want them to stay forever. That would be very helpful, that's lovely, that's very comfortable. And so we do, we have to give them certain things which in fact are specific to a hospital. And so they do health and safety training, they may do man manual handling training. But we all may also make assessments about their needs as far as numeracy and literacy are concerned. That's quite important. Sometimes people are not aware of what level they're at. And so we will, in fact, give them that training if it's, if it's appropriate to them. We will also give them other training that may be uh, necessary, like customer care. That's obviously very important in a shop because customer care is one of the areas that in fact people are not always aware of the little nuances and things and that helps them sell and helps them feel good about themselves. As the end result of a thorough recruitment process, your organisation will have volunteers who are able to take on the tasks independently. Well trained and well supported, some volunteers will stay with you for many years. When involving volunteers, you must take into consideration some legal responsibilities and cautions, including criminal records background checks and references. You may choose to take references checks on all of your volunteers, but be careful. You may exclude some excellent volunteers if you expect employment references. Consider the role that the volunteer will be involved in. Are references necessary? We have to take references and we will not start anybody unless we have got uh, good references in place. We also have to take up CRB uh, forms as well, but that takes a bit longer. However, in the meantime, so that we can start people sooner rather than later, we will ask them to fill in a self-declaration form and tell us of anything that we need to know and make decisions accordingly. Criminal records checks should only be taken out if the volunteer will have access to children or vulnerable adults or their records. If you work with children or vulnerable adults, you have a legal responsibility to ensure that your safeguarding procedures are up to date. You can do this by checking the Independent Safeguarding Authority website at www.isa-gov.org.uk. The importance of CRB, uh, Criminal Records Bureau checks, is crucial uh, to us and any, any organisation that has a youth aspect. Um, we pride ourselves in, in having a, a, a very good record of um, being able to ensure that young people are safe in all the activities that they take part in. We cannot guarantee that accidents don't happen, but um, what we try to do is to ensure that our adults are, um, are, have an un a, a good understanding of what the safeguarding procedures are. It's really important that we've got the policies and procedures because it makes you protected in knowing what you can and can't do. Um, because we've got the, kind of the, the, the policies in place, um, if you're following the policies you know you're protected, you're covered, you're not doing anything wrong, you don't have to worry. It takes that whole concern out of um, you know, being accused of things. You know, you're not concerned about that because you're told exactly what you can and can't do. If you're following the policies which are clearly laid out, then you don't have to worry because whatever you're doing is the right thing to do and you'll be supported and backed up all the way, which is quite reassuring in you know, the society we live in at the moment. 
Your organization needs to be careful not to create an employment situation. This is very simple but takes a little thought. Do not create job descriptions. Use terminology such as role description. Do not create contracts. Have a volunteer agreement. Only ever pay out-of-pocket expenses for money that is spent and is essential to enabling the volunteer to carry out the role, such as travel or lunch. Never pay a flat rate as volunteer expenses, such as £10 per day. This constitutes a salary. Similarly, do not give vouchers as a regular reward. Provide ongoing support for your volunteers. Whether that is through formal supervision or project meetings, it is important that you create a platform for volunteers to raise issues and for you to provide feedback. Ongoing support and supervision is probably the most important part of a manager's job. We try to make sure the volunteers feel that in fact we're taking interest at all times. I will go and talk to the volunteers, if only to say how are you today, is it busy? The manager will go and talk to people. We need to be engaging with them so they feel part of the whole process. There's nothing worse than standing there and thinking that nobody cares about you because they've said hello to you when they come, you come in and goodbye when you leave. You need to engage while people are here and we do that all the time. There will be um, a formal uh, review of their position and this is really very much about how they feel in how they're going in, the, in their role after that period of time. Now, this is normally carried out by someone outside of the group um, so that they can get an overview of how they're being supported within the group structure because that's supposed to be an ongoing activity throughout the time that they're there. Um, also, it's, it's good for the uh, adult volunteer to be able to review themselves so that they can let us know if there's anything that we need to um, change or, or, or know about as, as time goes on. I think you know we've looked at our volunteers from day one and we always review it at the AGM and see what, what are we doing well and what we're not doing well and we sit around the table and, and people really pitch in and say what, what they want to say about the club and how they feel like they've developed and what they could be doing better so that's, that's really how we work. It's a, really a, a group of people who like each other and we sit around the table and, and we hash out things and see where we, we could improve and where we need to improve. Remember that volunteers are giving their time to your organization. Say thank you at the end of the day. Hold celebration events. Present them with certificates during Volunteers Week. This takes place every year between the 1st and 7th of June. I mean, we celebrate uh, all our volunteers and what they do for the club uh, each year by, by having an end of year celebration. I think it's for the entire club, the, the kids that are involved, the staff, the coaches and the volunteers. And I know this year that, you know, they were very appreciative. We, we gave them some gifts and I think they wasn't expecting it. But again, they, they actually did all the work to make the party happen. So, you know, as, as the club coaches and the committee members, we decided to give all of them a gift. And I think they appreciate that. And, and I think, you know, like I said, we're all friends, which uh, makes things a lot easier. And also a lot of the parents, they have their kids involved, which also keeps them uh, close to the club. It's really, really important to say thank you to our volunteers that work within our group. Um, our scout group is no different to other scout groups. The, the group can only run as a result of volunteer activity. We like to say thank you at the end of every single session to our volunteers and to one another. We thank the helpers who've come in. We also like to thank the administrators who've done other work or people who've done shopping or what have you. At the end of every year, we try and have um, a more special thank you time where perhaps we'd all go to the pub together, maybe have a meal and a drink and have a sort of general thank you pat on the back. It's, it's to make the whole thing sociable and make it feel like people are part of a community. Appreciation for volunteers I think is ongoing. It's not all about award ceremonies. It needs to be on a daily basis or a weekly basis or when they've done something that's particularly helpful or different or just recognising things that they do and also the improvement in, in their own self-esteem I think that's worth recognising as well. However we do have uh, usually a Christmas party or something like that where we do recognise volunteers. We try to make it humorous so we have the best dressed volunteer or the one who laughed the most or the one who came in the earliest that sort of thing because in fact it engages with everybody 
as opposed to having best volunteer of the year, which sometimes can actually have the opposite effect. Everybody else feels that they are not been appreciated as much as that one person who they consider may not deserve it. We hope that you found this guide useful. Please take the time to visit our website and discover the wide range of services and resources that are available to help you further with your volunteer programs. Our thanks in particular go to the management, staff and volunteers of Lewisham Thunder, Lewisham Hospital and the 11th Forest Hill Scout Group, whose contribution to this film has been invaluable.